Chakra Linux is, hmm, I'm not sure where to start with this one. So I remember the name Chakra Linux tossed around years ago, but I never used it, and I didn't know anybody else that used it either, so it's another one of those distros. I do recall hearing it among the names of other distros like Manjaro or Bodhi or KAOS, all of which we've talked about on the show. Curiously, this little welcome app only appears here in the live section, and it's actually a plasmoid. I've never seen that one before. It's not really all that interesting because most of the links and buttons are just hyperlinks to a broken web page. This ISO is from 2017, and it's using Calamares, and I actually think that Chakra might have been one of the first early, early adopters of Calamares. It's funny how the Calamares installer looks largely the same so many years later, but I guess that could be considered a good thing. Why change it if it works? By default, Chakra bypasses the login screen and drops you straight into the desktop after the install. As you can see, this is a pretty standard KDE desktop that you would have seen three or four years ago. It's KDE Plasma Desktop version 5.10. Boy, that was a while ago. For system resources, Chakra weighs in at 5.5 gigabytes for a fresh install and uses about 650 megabytes at idle. Chakra doesn't come with HTOP installed and installing stuff from the repos is a bit uh, troublesome. We'll talk about that in just a minute, but first, let's check out the Chakra theme. It's called Heritage and it seems to be one of those dark light themes with a little bit of transparency added to custom icons here and there. I actually kind of dig it. There's only one original background that I saw, and it's this one with a flower, which is fine, I guess. I like the colors, but I'm not really a big fan of the flowers of Robert Mapplethorpe, so eh. The default app selection is a bit mercurial with a focus on Qt and KDE software, which is kind of Chakra's claim to fame, if you will. It includes the Qt interface designer, just in case you get a sudden urge to design some Qt UIs of your own, I guess. Chakra includes Caden Live 17.8, but funnily enough, it's missing an effects pack as well as some libs for utility stuff. Oops. Everything is cute top to bottom, but not everything is KDE. For example, they've got the SUSE Studio Image Writer here. So now that we've got that stuff out of the way, let's address part of the elephant in the room here. This is Chakra Linux from 2017. Why aren't we looking at Chakra from 2020? Well, if you remember Sabion, this is one of those Linux distros where the developers can't be bothered with creating a new ISO. And what's more, all of the available ISOs are busted and require some sort of wrenching to get them back on the road. The difference here is that the Chakra developers, or I guess maybe the developer at this point, is perfectly okay with that. I'll dive a bit deeper into the history of how Chakra got here during the outro section, but basically there are two different ISOs the stable one from 2017 and the testing one from 2019. Doesn't this sound a bit like Sabi on Linux? But does the 2019 ISO work? Well, hell no. I mean, you can install it and use it, I guess, but you can't like do anything besides just tinker around on the desktop because it has some weird issues with the mirrors or, or like the keys or something. I'm not even sure. If you try to update the 2017 ISO, Everything dies when you restart. Again, it's like that one distro. Uh, Sabion? If you try to update the 2019 ISO, Pac-Man tries its best but fails due to the aforementioned mirror errors. So from here, we're mostly just going to look at the 2019 image as best we can. So now let's talk about this desktop for just a moment. I've not seen a KDE desktop like this that is good looking, but also functional. It's clearly inspired by Mac OS, which is fine. And honestly, the, the whole setup is just awesome. They really refined the heritage theme here, and along with the background, this might be the nicest KDE desktop I've ever seen. It's KDE 5.16.4, so a somewhat recent build, and the applications are still assorted, but on point with what they're trying to do with a cute thing. In the way of networking, nothing but direct connections worked, so that's no DLNA, no Samba, Bluetooth was touchy, it detected and connected to my phone, but the desktop said the connection failed, but I was able to transfer a file, so it worked. And printer support was broken. Check this out, apparently Chakra forked something from Fedora because it's trying to use it to set up printer support, but it failed, so I mean, at least they tried. My encrypted internal hard drive mounted just fine, but there's no EXFAT support, so my SSD card was a no-go. 
All of the archives opened and extracted just fine, including the RAR file, and all of the media files worked, but Chakra didn't know what to do with the AC3 file at first, and Dragon Player struggled to play the first initial cut of the Distro Delves finale, but eventually figured it out, and everything worked good after that. All of the app images opened and worked just fine, but there's no snap or flat pack support, so the flat pack ref files did nothing. And speaking of app images, the graphics settings on the 2019 ISO are trash and they didn't work for either my NVIDIA or AMD card. But what does that have to do with app images? Well, did you know that there are many, or several actually, not that many, games that are packaged as app images? This package format does not get enough love. But since the graphics were messed up, none of them worked. But worry not, Distro Delver's 3D acceleration did work on the 2017 image, and since Chakra was a bit closer to Arch in 2017, the repos still work and I was able to get some games. I decided to use the AMD card because I didn't want to introduce additional complexity with the Nvidia card and the crappy drivers. Keep in mind that these are oldish builds of these games, and I tried out Red Eclipse here, which ran just fine, and Xenotic, which is really growing on me. The performance was fantastic in both games. I'm actually quite impressed. So Chakra is, or maybe was, based on Arch Linux, but very much like KAOS, it's really its own distro, or it, it's supposed to be, I guess. From what I understand, Chakra, Manjaro, and KAOS all have similar roots and sprung up from the same handful of developers a few years ago. Chakra had some major hosting difficulties back in 2017. It's like they were trying to self-host everything, but things kept like breaking and failing and people couldn't access the mirrors or the website or something. It was just a big mess. And the whole project just like fell apart at that time. It seems like it's alive today, maybe on life support. But from what I've seen on the discourse, the developer is like irate at people that ask questions or submit issues about the distro. There's a little banner at the top of the discourse that attempts to address the issues with the mirrors or whatever. And it came from a user that created a topic about an update that went bad and the developer uh, addressed it. And I mean, as you can see, the problem hasn't been solved. Apparently you can muck around with the config files to get Pac-Man to find the correct keys or whatever, but forget it. Users should not be expected to fix developer bugs just to get somebody else's software working. Come on, that's obscene. Chakra even scored a sponsorship from Datadog in a partnership with DuckDuckGo, but yet it remains effectively in a broken state. It is beyond me how these things can happen. So all in all, Chakra is a curious distro from a time where there were far fewer Linux distros to choose from, and I think most casual Linux users today, they expect their Linux distros to just work right out of the box, and Chakra does not, and as such, is slowly fading into obscurity.